Okay, so let's look at an attack now from the bottom. Uh, Rob's in my guard, and this is going to be called a Kimura. Very basic attack, very effective attack. Strong. So Rob's here and he's got a good uh, posture, he's in my guard. The first thing I need to do in this position is I need to somehow get Rob's hands on the mat. I can do that a few ways. One of the most effective is to use my large muscle group, which are my quads, and all I do is clear away his hands here. So Rob's strong here, what I want to do is I want to pull him forward, and I want the hands to go like that. I can do it outside in or inside out, however you prefer. Be careful when you do this that his head doesn't jam into your face, because I see a little guy, a lot of guys here, Rob's gonna do it slow now, they do this, they fire the hands forward, and boom! We end up with a dental bill, we don't want that. Okay? So Rob's here, I've got my guard closed, I wanna get them on the ground. I pull, and I pop them. As Soon as I pop them here, I wanna get control of his wrist with a monkey grip or a regular grip, really depends where your hand placement is. Okay, here I'm gonna go with a standard grip. And I wanna reach over with this arm and capture Rob's shoulder if I can and lock this position. The shoulder lock is very important for this because if you just try and pull him down, boom, here, and go here, then you really don't have a lot of control. He's got a lot of muscle recruitment. He can yank this out. So when you sit up, and he's in the he's in good mount, good posture. I break him down right right away. Boom! Here, look. Work those abs. Sit right up. Okay? This makes it also harder for him to pull away. And then what I do is I push it back and I lock it. Okay? So I've got a good lock position here. So now, again, like the Americana, I want his hand close to his wrist, close to his waist. Now what I want to do in order to get the most effective leverage on him, I want to walk my hips out. Because if I just try and pull it from here, and Rob's pretty strong, I'm not going to be able to do it as effectively. So look what I do. I start to hip escape out. I transition this foot over, and I start to walk out my hips. What has just happened is Rob's whole body had created more space for Rob's body to fall in here, yet I still have his shoulder elevated. And now when I go for the Kimura, and all I'm doing is moving this straight across his back and then up. Okay? When I go for the Kimura, he's laying way down here. It's hard for him to defend. I've got it locked. I'm moving this here and now turning. Okay? One more time through. Here, we're playing. Boom! It's there right away. I can almost be 90 degrees to him. Close it. Pressure. Now, a second counter off of this. Sometimes you'll get somebody who's really strong. And you'll hit that Kimura here. Boom! And I'll hit the Kimura. And Rob is going to, yeah, he's going to try and posture out of this. In order to hit this, I want to make sure both of my feet are on the floor here and I want to pop my hips and I'm going to sweep him sideways. So I'm here on the lock. As Soon as I see I don't have the lock anymore, this lock hand is going to now become a way for me to propel my hips forward. So now both feet are on the mat and I'm popping Rob, pulling this in and sweeping him. Okay, one more time. I go for my attack, right, ah, too strong. As soon as I feel that, this goes on the mat, both feet on the, on the mat, my hips pop up to float his weight, and turn over as my arm pulls through. And I end up in a good position here, most of the time in a mount. So you've got your Kimura attack, you've got your Kimura sweep, if his posture starts to float up, Feel it, read it, pop your hips through.